Welcome back to our series on Robert Greene's The Laws of Human Nature. This is episode 6, where we'll dive into the complex world of narcissism, focusing on the four types of narcissistic personalities. Out of these four types, here's the first. The Complete Control Narcissist. Have you ever met someone who seems really nice at first, but then turns out to be controlling and mean? That's what we're talking about when we discuss a complete control narcissist. To better understand this type of person, we'll use Joseph Stalin, a former leader of the Soviet Union, as an example. Let's explore how such individuals operate and how we can recognize them in our own lives. 1. Charming Beginnings When people first met Stalin, they often thought he was great. He was friendly listened carefully when others spoke, and made people feel special. He would put his arm around people and joke with them. This made many want to be close to him and trust him. For example, Stalin encouraged even junior officials to use the familiar you form when speaking to him, making them feel like they were part of his inner circle. He would listen intently, his eyes boring into you, as if he could read your deepest thoughts. One young man wrote that after meeting Stalin, people were anxious to see him again because he created a sense of a lasting bond between them. 2. The Change As Stalin got more powerful, he started to change. He became suspicious of everyone, even his close friends. A clear example of this is what happened to Sergei Kirov, who was once Stalin's closest friend and confidant. In 1934, some regional leaders approached Kirov with a plan to replace Stalin as leader. Kirov remained loyal and told Stalin about the plot. But after this, Stalin's attitude toward Kirov changed. He became cold and suspicious. Kirov tried to regain Stalin's trust by praising him more in public, but this only made Stalin more suspicious. In December 1934, Kirov was assassinated. While Stalin wasn't directly linked to the killing, Many believed he had approved it. 3. Creating Fear Stalin began to arrest and kill many of his former friends and allies. During the late 1930s, he ordered a great purge where hundreds of thousands of people lost their lives. Many of his top officials were tortured to confess to crimes they didn't commit. Stalin would eagerly listen to accounts of how his once brave friends behaved during torture. He laughed when he heard how some of them got on their knees, crying and begging to see Stalin to ask for forgiveness. This shows how he enjoyed seeing powerful people humiliated. 4. Controlling everything As time went on, Stalin wanted to control every little thing. During World War II, he tried to manage all parts of the war himself, even down to choosing what kind of bayonets, knife-like weapons, soldiers should use. He wouldn't listen to his general's advice and often made bad decisions because of this. Stalin complained, I am the only one dealing with all these problems. I am out there by myself. He fired his most experienced generals because he thought only he could handle the war effort properly. 5. Impossible Situations Stalin would put people in situations where they couldn't win. If they agreed with him all the time, he'd get angry and say they weren't thinking for themselves. But if they disagreed with him, he might have them arrested or killed. Once, he shouted at a group of generals, What's the point of talking to you? Whatever I say, you reply, Yes, Comrade Stalin. Of course, Comrade Stalin. Wise decision, Comrade Stalin. But disagreeing with him could be fatal. This made everyone around him very nervous and afraid. 6. Humiliating Others Stalin enjoyed making powerful people feel small. He would force his top officials to do embarrassing things at his late-night dinner parties. For instance, he would make them drink heavily to lose self-control. At the end of these evenings, he would play music and force the men to dance. He made Nikita Khrushchev, who later became the leader of the Soviet Union, do a strenuous dance called the Gopak, which often made Khrushchev sick. Stalin would laugh uproariously 
as he made other grown men slow dance together as couples. This showed how he enjoyed controlling and humiliating even his most powerful subordinates. 7. Why do they act this way? People like Stalin often had difficult childhoods. Stalin's father beat him mercilessly, and his mother wasn't very loving. This can make someone grow up feeling insecure and wanting to control others to feel safe. These leaders are very ambitious and want lots of attention. They're good at pretending to care about others, but deep down, they only care about themselves. They need to feel superior to everyone else. 8. The danger they pose. Complete control narcissists can be very dangerous, especially if they become leaders of countries or big companies. They might seem great at first, but they end up hurting many people and causing lots of problems. They often destroy the very things they're supposed to be in charge of. For example, Stalin got rid of many good military leaders, which made his country weaker when World War II started. 9. How to spot them. It's important to be able to recognize this type of person. Here are some signs to look out for. They're very charming at first, but their interest in you doesn't last long. They don't have any close, long-lasting friendships where they show their true feelings. They often had difficult childhoods. People who work closely with them seem scared or nervous. They can't handle any criticism and get angry if people disagree with them. 10. Protecting yourself. If you think someone might be a complete control narcissist, it's best to keep your distance. Don't let their charm fool you. Remember, once you get too close to them, it can be very hard to get away. Interestingly, Stalin's predecessor, Vladimir Lenin, had understood how dangerous Stalin was. On his deathbed, Lenin tried to warn others about Stalin, but his warnings were ignored. 11. The Bigger Picture It's not just the fault of people like Stalin that they come to power. Sometimes, when a country is having big problems, people might think a strong, controlling leader is the answer. But this usually makes things worse, not better. 12. Long-lasting effects The harm caused by complete control narcissists can last for a long time. The fear and distrust they create can affect people for many years, even after the leader is gone. In Stalin's case, the effects of his rule were felt long after his death. In fact, Stalin died partly because of the fear he had created. When he had a stroke, his lieutenants were too afraid to help him or call a doctor, fearing it might be a trap. He died from their neglect, showing how the culture of fear he created ultimately turned against him. In conclusion, while complete control narcissists might seem appealing at first, they are actually very harmful. By understanding how they work, we can better protect ourselves and our communities from their influence. It's important to value leaders who genuinely care about others and who are willing to listen and work together, rather than those who only want power and control. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If anything resonated with you, feel free to drop your thoughts and personal stories in the comments below. Your input might just be the insight someone else needs. Here's something to keep in mind. Make a daily habit of learning something useful. Just like how you nourish your body with food, your mind needs nourishment too. Be deliberate about what you consume, because otherwise, the algorithm might start influencing your thoughts. Think about it. We're always open to welcoming subscriptions to our channel as donations to support our future upcoming projects and bring you top-tier content. Join our community by subscribing today.